Welcome to the world's worst van build. It's not even a van. It's a 1997 Ford Ranger with a regular cab, two wheel drive, and the four cylinder 2.3 liter engine with nearly a quarter million miles on the clock. In short, it's the perfect road trip vehicle. So without further ado, I'll walk you through how I turned my old Ford Ranger into the worst van build ever and why I think it's perfect. Lately, my mind has been cluttered and messy. That of course is reflected in my cluttered and messy truck. First thing first, I've got to clean out my future living space. I don't have a whole lot of storage space in my apartment, so I've just thrown all kinds of crap in here. Buckets of clay, window screen tools. Tools! Tools! Organizer. This truck bed is approximately six feet long, four feet wide, and about three foot tall to the top of the camper. Well, you get what you pay for. Here's how you know this is a man's truck. I laid out this footprint of the truck bed in tape on my living room floor so that I could pile all the stuff I wanted to bring with me in that area to make sure it would fit. Then I could measure the height of all of my stuff and know how tall of a platform I would have to build in order to keep my stuff underneath the platform. I didn't really want to buy anything to pack my stuff into the truck, so I made do with what I had some big plastic tubs for storage, some old fruit pallets I had picked up by a dumpster somewhere, and milk crates, of course, the old standby. Once I knew all of my stuff would fit, I could measure the platform to fit in the truck bed with enough space below it for my stuff and enough above it for me to sleep. The way I did this is I measured to make sure I would have room to lie down on my sleeping pad and still be able to roll onto my side with my shoulders clearing the roof. For a short guy, I have relatively broad shoulders, so this was uh, a task. Then it was a matter of building a sturdy enough platform with half inch plywood and scrap lumber from the job site where I was working. I put a leg in each corner and one in the middle front and back with lots of angled braces to prevent racking. As you can see, I don't have a wood shop. I piled all the wood scraps into the truck drove down a county road till I found a gravel pullout with a good little overlook and got to work. I won't bore you with the details of my amateur carpentry. It's not especially skillful and the details won't really be transferable to whatever you might have to do. Just know that despite what you may often see on YouTube or Instagram, you don't need a wood shop with tens of thousands of dollars of equipment to build something functional. Yeah, this isn't pretty. But all I used was a cordless circular saw, an impact driver, and screws. Oh, and the typical tape measure, chalk line, speed square, and pencil. But all extremely basic, portable, relatively inexpensive tools that anyone should frankly have if they're trying to build stuff at all. I think in the future, if people are interested, I will put up a video about the essential tips and skills for amateur carpenters. Um, even though I'm really not very skilled at it, I am able to make functional stuff that I need. It's really not difficult and you don't need to know very much and you don't need very many tools to make something that ain't too pretty but just gets the job done. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. With the platform sorted, the problem is, how do I access all of the stuff underneath, and especially the stuff that's towards the middle of the truck? The answer, drawers. Kind of. I built these with plywood and hardboard. Hardboard because it's thin and cheap, and it's slick on one side. And I wasn't going to bother with any drawer sliders. They're too expensive, it's too much engineering to get right. And I just didn't think it was necessary. So I built one to size with the fruit pallets I was using, which hold all of my tools. I have to have my tools. The other I made a box, hardboard on the bottom, half inch plywood sides, a cedar face, 
and a sliding hardboard top to use as a cooking surface, table, and writing desk. With the platform built and the drawers sorted, I pulled my camper top and added some reflective foam board insulation panels to the top. This will keep some heat in, but the bare windows will let even more out. However, the insulation should keep the roof from building up a bunch of condensation during the night and then freezing while I sleep, and then in the morning, melting and soaking all of my stuff. And that's it. Nothing fancy, nothing expensive, nothing technically difficult. Just some basic tools and scrap materials. All I bought specifically for this build were the $20 hardboard sheet and the $24 insulation panel. Other than that, everything I already had on hand or had foraged. If there's something that you want to do, but it seems out of your reach, try to reconceptualize your goal. Instead of imagining that $60,000 Sprinter van, look at your own vehicle and go, how could I make it work? All right. All right. We'll see if any of that cuts together.